I'm gonna do another episode of playing for the 5-0. Um, currently 4-0 in the league. Let's see. Played against Gardens, Mono Red, Jeskai Ephemerate, and I think Mono Red again. I forget what this match was. Um, feeling decent about familiars currently. Um, I think this. I'm happy enough with this mana base. Um, with one Glacial Floodplain. I'm not super happy about having to play this tap land, um, but I think it's worth it. Uh, there is some tension with the Chancery. When you draw a Floodplain and Chancery, it's not great, but um, yeah, any other changes? So I'm not playing the fourth Counterspell. I've decided to play Prismatic Trans instead to, to try to respect Mono Red. In addition, I'm playing Don Clerk in the main deck instead of um, a Destroy Evil because the Terra decks seem to have kind of disappeared and Mono Red is much more popular now. Um, I was playing some main deck Hydro Blast. I think it's pretty reasonable if you want to like pre-board for red and play like some main deck Hydros and then like trim a snap, like, trim a deep analysis. I think this is a pretty reasonable way to play, but it's not what I've gone for here. Um, I also think that going forward I might end up like cutting these two and then playing two Seagate Oracles just because like the counter spells in the metagame are a bit down like the reason I, you want to play this combo of four modern age three deep analysis is for the the counter spell decks um and it's not quite as good against stuff like mono red but uh, so i could see wanting to play some seagate oracles instead um yeah so that's an option and then in the sideboard i'm not doing anything too fancy. I'm playing an exclude for the emblem decks since I ended up getting the fourth counter spell out of my main deck. I felt like I wanted to have one more sideboard card for the emblem decks, and then I'm playing six hydro blasts. Um, I've considered playing additional prismatic strands on my sideboard, but I think that um, it's actually not worth it to play strands in your sideboard. Like strands is a better main deck card because the opponents are going to bring in flaring pain if they see strands, and so you want to like basically strands is at its best in game one and worse in the post board games. Um, and I don't think you can ever main deck more than one of this card. Um, but I could be wrong. So, yeah. Um, again, nothing super fancy here. It's sort of the same the same sort of list you've seen me play a million times before, but let's see if I can get the 5-0. Alright. I'm on the draw. Hmm, I don't know this opponent, so I'm going to assume that they're on mono red. Um, I think keeping this sort of handed was de probably defensible a few months ago, but I think I'm supposed to mulligan given that it's, I'm just going to like assume my opponent's on mono red and I don't, I don't have anything proactive to do. Like my best play is to hold up prohibit on turn three. Uh, so I think I'm going to mulligan this hand. Okay. This hand is significantly better. Um, still much better if I was on the play, but, um, can't exactly control that. So Rustvale Bridge either means Jeskai Ephemerate or some sort of Mardu Synth or Boros Synth deck. I'm hoping not Jeskai Ephemerate. Okay, so 3-Bit Inspector most likely means Boros deck. So I should technically wait to the end step, although I highly doubt it's going to matter. So I have two options here. I have, I have a bunch of options. I think I'm supposed to cycle for a Plains here because I can discard the planes to the Chancery, depending on how this plays out. But basically, I have two I have two options on this turn. I can either... Well, I actually have three options. So my options are either Chancery, Pass, Preordain Chancery, Pass, or Modern Age, or Planes Modern Age, and then discard something. And I think, given that I'm on the draw, I need to get on the board. So I'm going to do this. The downside to this play is that um, I'm not going to be able to discard the planes to the Modern Age, which is generally something that you want to be doing. Like, if you want to play the Chancery, return the planes, and then discard the planes. Um, but I don't have that option in this particular spot. Um, I didn't want to discard the deep analysis there just because my opponent can have a uh, main deck relic and bajuka bog, that sort of stuff. So I'd rather wait till next turn. And also I'll have more information next turn. I'm pretty happy discarding this island, but um, my best draws are like a Sunscape Familiar, um, a, uh, what's it called? A Faithful or a, um... Another Modern Age. So here I kind of bricked. So I could... I'm actually not opposed to snapping this Horse Skyfisher. It kind of looks a bit wonky, but I'm kind of behind, and my bottleneck is going to be not be cards here, I don't think. Um, 
Yeah. And my opponent clearly doesn't have anything better to return than the Thraben Inspector. Like, this is not a good play as far as value is concerned, but... I don't think that's the worst. So I'm going to cast Preordain, try to find either a Faithful or a Familiar, and then assuming I don't find one of those, I'll flashback Prismatic Experience. I could do it the other way around, but... Uh, let's see. Ephemerate and Prismatic Strands. Did I say flashback? I meant flashback deep analysis. Um, I think these are just good enough, unfortunately. They're not like exactly what I'm looking for, but I think they're good enough. Um, so most likely the next turn... Hmm, it's kind of rough because I want to defend the Modern Age with my Prismatic Strands. Like, on this next turn cycle, my opponent's most certainly going to want to um, lightning bolt the modern age um but I, i'm one mana short of playing the familiar and then holding up pragmatic trends so we'll see exactly what happens here faithful is probably my best draw um so they're picking up a land which leads me to believe that um they don't have a land a lot of lands in their hands um okay Interesting, interesting spot. Um, so what I can do is go Planes, Familiar, and then try to snap something and then hold up three mana for um, Prismatic Strands. Again, like, no, I, think, I think this is a fine play, although it looks a bit wonky. Let me make sure I cast my spells in the correct order here. Uh, do I need to tap like this? I'm trying to think if there's a correct way I need to tap, because my opponent can sacrifice this and sacrifice artifacts in response to the snap, although I don't think I should be worried about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'll do this, and then if my opponent, I'll float blue, and then if my opponent sacks in response, I can use the mana to cycle this for another island. Okay, so now I just cycle this, grab here, that's the turn. If my opponent wants to damage me, they have to get through strands. Like most, if they have a journey to nowhere, obviously they can like journey this and then get through get through the blocker that way. But I think most of the time they're gonna have burn spells in their hand in this in this sort of spot. Now, if they bolt again in response, I can name white to prevent the combat damage. That's a neat little trick um, with prismatic strands because you don't choose the color when you cast the strands; you choose the color in resolution. <clears throat> It doesn't come up that much, but it does come up occasionally. So now they're going to bolt. And they're going to bolt again. I'm going to choose white. So they, they don't hit me with the combat. Okay, so my options here are cast Lorien Revealed or cast Game Answer. And then, like, I kind of want to get a white creature in play for... I'm going to go for the uh, Arcane Mancer loops and stuff, so I'm going to try to draw a white creature off of this, which I did not do. Not great. <clears throat> I think my opponent's range is likely to be a bunch of burn spells here. Like, they, they can't have lands in their hand. Okay, I mean, they, they have one land, but th th so they have four cards. One of them is a Shaman. Okay, one of them is a Glint Hawk. Interesting. Um, hmm. Okay. And I'd love to draw a Faithful or Familiar. be fantastic. And I did not. Um... So, again, I'm not unhappy about like this, I think. So, I mean, this looks like a really weird play, but just because I'm bouncing my opponents into that into the battlefield creature, but if I draw a white creature off of this, I can use the Prismatic Strands to defend the uh, Ephemerate. And if not, I can use the Ghostly Flicker to defend the uh, Ephemerate. Okay, I, I did draw a white creature. I'm going to cast the Modern Age since I have a lot of cards. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need Lorien Reveal this game. Then I can pass. <clears throat> I think the important thing in this game is sort of realizing that, like, the game is going to be won and lost on tempo and not on value, so I think it's fine to, to snap my opponent's creatures just for a little bit of uh, tempo. Also, my opponent has sort of had a disjointed draw where they don't have any artifacts to uh, return to their hand with these. Okay, Journey to Nowhere is pretty good. So now I'm looking to draw into my... Um... Uh, 
Dawnbringer Cleric so that I can destroy the Journey to Nowhere. Um, I think this turn is likely going to involve just returning this Ephemerate and then... Um, see, I don't have a counter, which is kind of awkward. I'm just going to cast Prudin, I think. And then next turn I can return the Ephemerate and then try to go for a, um, a combo. I think I'm pretty happy miring back the Familiar. Like, I have enough spells in my hand. I don't. I think lands are, are acceptable in this position. I know my opponent has Crook Clan Shaman as well, which is why I, I kind of want to save this for the, the Shaman activations, but... Okay, that's pretty strong. I now am definitely digging for... Um, Shaman, or sorry, the um the cleric. Dawnbringer cleric is my answer to these enchantments here. I think if my opponent wants to destroy the arcane answer with two makeshift munition shots on my upkeep, I'm gonna just let that happen, and then replay the arcane answer. And um, maybe I should have bought him this the second land. Probably I was supposed to bottom the tap land. Yep. I want to save this prismatic strands for the um, the Cork Clan Shaman. I think. Let this happen. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna go Arcane Answer, return Ephemerate, and then evoke Ephemerate, and then probably just mire back the um, Bam. Okay, never mind, I drew a fam. Okay, there's the Dornberg Cleric. I'm just gonna play a tap land and pass the turn. I could play an untap land to um hold up Ghost of Flicker. Maybe that was better. Probably was better. I don't think it's gonna be super I don't think it's gonna matter a whole lot here, but I'm pretty pretty far ahead. Synthesizer's good for them. I do need to find a counter at some point. So I know one of their cards is a Synthesizer, one of their cards is a Arclet Shaman, and one of their cards is a Plains. So the first order of business is just destroying these two enchantments, I think. Do this. Do this. And then do this. I guess technically I was supposed to um, mire first, so I could draw the um, arcane answer, but I don't think it matters that much. What I do here, I just need to try to find a counter spell now. Uh, yeah, let's do this to try to draw a counter spell. I mean. One of the cards that draws here is going to be a Arcane Answer. So. so, if they have Baduka Bog, it's pretty bad. Or a Relic. I will lose a lot of stuff, but it's fine. Okay, so I want to respond with Snap to try to generate mana to try to find something. Um, sure. It's fine. I don't know how much this really matters, but I have to draw four. I do have infinite life as well here, but 
that doesn't really matter too much. Actually, technically, I was correct to return the ephemerate here. This is this is not a good play. Yeah, I meant to return the ephemerate so that I could um, just ephemerate, return the flicker, and then go from there. But it's okay. I have 17 cards left in my deck, and three of them are counter spells. So. We'll draw my counter spells at some points. Interesting attacks. Um, yeah, I'm not afraid of dying. I'll just block like this. Take six. Yeah, see, I would have had another ephemerate going had I, had I executed that properly, but I have um, enough cards that I don't think it matters too much. Um, yeah, sure. I'm just going to snap this from mana. I think it's a fine thing to do here. And then... I do need to find a counterspell, so I'm going to return a preordain here. By counterspell, I mean prohibit. Which I know I have in my deck, but... don't seem to want to draw it. Okay, sure. I guess I'm doing this then. Okay. I'm going to attack for four. Five. I'm gonna counter the um the core skyfisher, I think. I need another removal soul, I can flicker a okay, or Island to return the removal soul to counter another creature, so I think this is an acceptable thing to do. Sure, I don't care about the Ribbon Inspector. At some point I'll find a Prohibit. I mean, I have 12 cards left and there's two more, two Prohibits in the deck, so... Jeez. I mean, they're in there somewhere. I am pretty sure. There we go. Okay. So now I just have to execute. I don't want to go about doing this. So I have infinite snaps right now. Uh, the question is just what is the most efficient way to execute this? I think I'm going to um, snap the Krakklin Shaman to force my opponent to act on that. And then if they don't want to act, that's also fine.
Against Boros, I definitely want, I generally bring at least two Hydroblasts, um, usually three, and then I like the Gates and the Rusal, I think, but I don't like, I don't want to go too high on the counter spells, and I already have one Rusal in my main deck, so I don't think that's necessary. Um, <clears throat> they did show me, um, what's it called? They showed me Journey to Nowhere, so I kind of like keeping this in. Um, Although, you, you could, I could definitely see an argument for doing this, uh, because Nature's Chant can answer Journey to Nowhere and Relic of Progenitus. I don't feel like I usually want answers to Relic, but um, I can hit their lands as well, so I think it's fine to play one of these. Uh, I definitely am fine trimming two snaps. Um, I can trim this Prismatic Strands. It's definitely an option. Um, it's going to be worse against the Graveyard Hate, so I'm not opposed to trimming that. Yeah, I can trim one Faithful, but I think on the draw, they're, they end up playing more like a Burn Style deck. Um, so I think I like keeping these four in and seeing how this how this game plays. A lot of times these Boros decks will end up boarding into a much more interactive game. Um, on the post board, they'll bring in like a bunch of relics and a bunch of red blasts. And in those sort of games, the faithfuls aren't quite as good, but um, I sort of need to respect the burn game plan as well. And then, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I don't need the strands because uh, I can use Hydro Blast as an answer to Kark Clan Shaman. Not that Kark Clan Shaman is super good against the Modern Age Deep Analysis version of this deck, but it's still um, a card I need to have on my, on my mind. I think it's actually allowed, like you're actually allowed to trim a Mancer here if you want. Um, but I'm not going to do that, I don't think. So now, I have to decide if I actually want to board in all these cards. Like this might just be overboarding, I think I can trim a Negate. The nice thing about Negate is that you can hit, um, you can hit Relics and Journeys and um, like Lemboss in addition to the, the Hydro Blasts, which can hit their Red Blasts um, the synthesizers and um, bolts, but so I'm gonna. I have to trim one more card. I think I will. I could go down to one snap, but the issue is that you actually have problems winning the game if it XL one of your snaps. I'm gonna actually not play the nature's chant, maybe, and just see how this goes. If I see that they boarded in a bunch of um. Relics, and I might board in this, the, um, the chant for game three. So they keep seven. I keep seven as well. This hand is perfectly reasonable, I think. Turn one faithful is always great. And then I'm most likely just going to end up discarding this glacial floodplain to the, uh, the modern age. Okay, so they played Bard Fat Better Fist, which is totally fine. Um, I have to decide whether or not I'm going to block. Um, with Faithful in this turn, because they can bolt the Faithful if I do block. I think most likely I'm just not going to block, but so we'll see what happens here. Okay, so they have Galblast, Blast, which is not good for me. And they have Dawnbreak Cleric, which is also not good for me. Okay. This is like the perfect answer, because they have three artifacts. They have Galblast, Blast, they have Dawnbreak Cleric. Definitely a very strong start from the opponent. Um, so, I'm going to cycle... I guess, actually, this is incorrect sequencing. What I should do is cycle first, then play the island, because now my opponent knows that I have a land in hand. Um, I don't think I want either of these. I have a big draw spell ready, and Arcane Mancer is kind of slow on this board. Uh, although, although that could be wrong. I think I'm just trying to look around Ephemerator or, or Blocker or something. Okay, so I'm probably going to... Well, we'll see what happens. If my opponent casts a... Um, that's going to resolve. I was going to say, if my opponent casts a uh, Glintock, then I can kill the Batter Fist and force them to pick up a land, but... As it stands, I think I'm just going to do this. Try to soak up some damage. And now I have... I'm definitely hoping to draw something, because I really don't want to have to evoke this small drifter. I suspect that my opponent has... Um, some red blasts. So I'm just going to try to eat the red blast with this. Okay, it doesn't look like they have. Okay, I drew into ephemerate. That's very cool. All right. Well, that was a bit lucky, but you know, sometimes it works out. Let's see if they have removal. I'm assuming they do. Although they didn't play it, so hmm. I think we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Looks like my opponent's trying to draw into a removal, of some sort. 
Okay, they have a relic. So I get to draw two more cards, which is definitely nice. Um, I will take two from this. Okay. So, ay yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see how I'm like flooding out. This is why I really like the Modern Age, because what it's going to allow me to do is discard these excess lands. Turn them into real cards. Oh boy. Oh boy, if I hadn't drawn this Modern Age, I would almost certainly be losing this game, but... Let's see. Oh, they get to kill the Modern Age. That is not good for me. Although, like, you know, they're... Uh, because this doesn't actually really attack me, they're effectively just one for winning the Modern Age, which is, like, annoying, but it's not, um... It's not that bad. Like, you really need the Modern Age to block in the, in the Kage deck more than you do in this deck. I mean, you do still want it to block, obviously, but... I think this exchange... Generally, this exchange is worse for Kage's than it is for Familiars. The opponent's down to one card. I have five cards, but... Three of them, four of them are lands, so obviously not the greatest ever. Um, I don't really want to play this yet because of the relic. Like if they just keep this in play forever, that's, that's just good for me. So obviously this runs into a red blast, but uh, yeah. So let's. I can't actually cycle for a planes and play the, the faithful because both of my planes are already in play. Okay, I'll take a Muldrifter, I will bottom a Chancery, and then I think I'm okay discarding this Ash Brands to get a Chancery in play. I don't, think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be missing my land drops anytime soon. I could attack there, but... Okay, perfect. See, now they crack the Relic because they need to. And now next turn I can go Deep Analysis, and then our Game Answer return Deep Analysis. Or return something else if I find something better to return. I did lose one Ephemerate. That's pretty much it. So nothing too crazy. <clears throat> so they get some value. Bounce land. I really like how deep analysis insulates you against the, um, the red blasts. It's really just fantastic. Big fan of this card, even though it is quite slow. So, hmm. yeah, I'm going to start with Deep Analysis. Actually, I don't think I'm afraid. I think Red Blast, like, am I even afraid of that? I guess I am. I'm going to cast Pyridine and try to find a Counterspell. And then... Okay, I mean, I'm not going to say no to another Deep Analysis, but I think I'm just going to slam my best card, and if they have a counter, they have a counter. It doesn't look like they have a counter, though. Um, Yeah, sure, I'll play this Island to not go to cleanup. Um... <clears throat> Obviously, these lands, the excess lands don't seem super useful right now, but if I draw into the Modern Age, I can always discard them. I have two more of those in my deck. Okay, they drew a land. I'm going to try to double block the Skyfisher. Um, if they have a bolt for, the, for one of the Drifters, it's totally fine. I'm not, not sad about that exchange at all. Okay, now I just am super far ahead. So I'll start with the Fam. And let's... Draw some cards, and then draw some more cards. Uh, let's see. Modern Age is perfect. Uh, let's see. So, I think I'm just going to go Plains Fam. The problem with that is that I, if I tap out, then they can draw Crockland Shaman, which I don't really want to leave myself exposed to. So I'm going to discard the Plains. And then preordain, and then hold up uh, reversal. I do have to discard something to hand size. Um, hmm. I guess I'll discard deep analysis. <clears throat> and I'm just going to counter whatever my opponent plays. Since I'm uh, I have seven cards and my opponent has three. Okay, now this game is over, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I will discard Learn Revealed, I suppose. Um, I don't think anything I do matters at this point. I will just take game actions at random.
right, my opponent conceded. That is trophy number three of the season. Um, I have to say, I kind of like where Fandas is at. Um, I haven't been a big fan of this deck's positioning over the past, like, I don't know, six months or so, um, just because the Talarian Terror decks are a big problem for this sort of strategy, but... Um, and also, all the glitters is a pretty frustrating deck to play against. Like, I think I would say Fams is probably a bit favored in that matchup, but it's really frustrating. Um, and it's, it's really hard to be actually favored, like significantly favored in that matchup, just because they have pretty insane nut draws. Um, but I think that we've moved to a spot where Fams is a bit better. Um, the main concern is the the Gardens decks, I think, are, are much better with the new cards. Um, I've historically not liked that the Gardens deck much at all. Um, I think it, I, I definitely think the decks are st is still overplayed, but um, it seems to have gotten an upgrade, so that's something I have on my radar, but um, overall I'm pretty happy with where Familiars is at. Um, I always kind of think this deck will just die and never come back, and it seems to, it seems to come back, so... Well, anyways, thanks for watching.